Super Legends. We're gonna stay in the area this weekend. We had a crazy week, we had a lot going on, so really didn't do much riding. We're gonna hook up with a group and sit in. Hopefully the bike we're gonna ride to the right start. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up Paul. So this route uh, started from the house in Northampton. We rode out to the bike barn. They're in an area called Cypress Wood. Picked them up, rode back, back to our area. And we ended up in an area called Old Town Spring. You'll see the break there. I took a lot of shots during the break. We headed back out, kind of an out and back route. Back to our area. We broke off from them at this point and Paul and I rode to Creekside Park, which is close to the woodlands. Just spinning, just kind of loosening up. We didn't want to go back to the bike shop. And right there we backtracked, ended up wrapping up the ride. So hope you guys enjoy the clips. We're wearing the team kit this morning. I'm taking the Kish bike today. I'm trying to get everything synchronized. It's a beautiful morning. I hear the birds singing. Did my yard yesterday. Nice and cool morning. It's probably about 24 C. It's probably 74, 75 degrees. It feels actually nice and cool. So that's why we're gonna be leaving a little earlier starting next. We'll be leaving at seven to start our rides at seven instead of 7.30. So we can finish about half hour earlier. Makes a difference. Well, Paul's here. All right. So we're uh, we're gonna go hook up with the bike barn. I was just telling the guys, I want us to start our rides around 7, instead of 7.30. Yeah, since we had a crazy week, there's a, there was a group ride in the, uh, you know, remember that church on 2854? Yeah. Where we saw those guys. They were riding from there again today. Oh. But with everything that was going on yesterday, yeah. I just, it just would have been too much for us to... Yeah, we were busy. I was doing my yard and other stuff. Paul was running around doing errands. It was just a crazy Friday for us. Yeah. We're hooking up the bike barn. We're at the bike shop in Champions. Champions area. And that his name is Ride Leader is late. So this, this, this is the ride leader. He's gonna make a speech. Uh, this morning we're gonna do Old Town Spring, and we rerouted it the route to keep it safer and nicer. And for those of you who are new to the ride, we have some rules. That's um, Teresa waving at us. We stop for That's all Teresa. traffic lights, stop for Teresa. all stop signs. If you are on the front of the group, you're the only person that has to unclip. Uh, if you're on the back of the group, please call out on obstacles. If you get a flat, the whole group stops. If you have air bars, you cannot use them in a pace line. If you have earbuds, you cannot wear them. If you have to pass someone, please do not pass them on the right because we are not expecting you to be there. Pass on the left. And there are no sprint zones on this ride. It takes uh, all the fun out of it. <laughs> I'm messing with it. The pace is 18 to 22. Yep. And if you have lights, please turn them on. Safety first. All right. We 
Whenever you're ready, we can roll. Yeah, the, uh, the thing about the back. earbuds, okay. I'm glad that he okay. said that. On this ride, some genius was riding with a radio on his bicycle. And I guess because of the earbud rule, he had that thing turned up so loud. It was annoying. I was like, I kept asking, what's that noise? When we, when we come back, what we can do is... Uh, we, we're not coming back to the store. So what we do is after the ride, yeah. we can go maybe to the woodlands or something, okay? Yeah. Wait, you remember where you uh, split with them that one time? Yeah. We're going to come that way and we're going to continue. Yeah, because while they come back, uh, if they do the same thing from the last time, they come back on that back way. Yeah. So we can decide what we do at that point. I was gonna ask him 18 to 22 with the wind behind us. Please. That was crazy. Right? That's why I thought you're taking all the fun out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about curve. You know, when you set a speed range for your group, you know, it, it's, it's, it's keep my contingent upon the conditions. And, you know, I end up discussing that with Paul. We kind of laughed about it because if the wind's in our face, we ain't gonna be doing 22. Not with the level in this group, you know. I will be doing 22 going full gas the whole time. I thought it was good that we rode here, so we don't have to come back. But they have to use something so they use speed. The guys I ended up riding with after this ride, on this is Saturday on Sunday, I rode with like pro level riders, category one, category two riders on Sunday with the Woodlands Club, it's a different group on the north side. <laughs> they have two rides. They have 22 plus, and then they have like 16, 18 or something like that. And there's based on the fact that we're in the hills out there. Right here, this part of town, got a few rollers, but nothing major. So, uh, I ended up riding with those guys, and those of you who follow me on Strava, you saw the ride. I loaded it up there for Sunday, and uh, my legs were a little tired, I guess, because I rode this ride. But still, I used to be able to do that. But it's been a long time. And it's just something new I want to start doing on Sundays to just take my riding to another level. We've been riding so much this year. I want to challenge myself and, and bring different things to the channel. I may have to mount the camera on my bike on one of those rides because I can't hold it. You're going pretty much full gas most of the ride. They go short, they do maybe 40 miles, flat out, just fast. That's what they do. So you don't have time to frame your shots and all that, and I'm not going to be carrying the gimbal. So. I'll find so a way with a connector and just put the put the camera on my bike. Hey Gimbo, good. Look with me, man. Looking for you. Gimbo's here to track. We stopped here for this light. It ended up being a long light. Oscar, right? Did you ride Oscar? Oscar. Oscar was on the ride the last time we came, I remember doing, him greeting us. So I sped it up right here, because we were standing there for a while. And then after it comes back, you will see where the ride leader asks us to move up. There's a car behind us, and so he asks us to get the guy's attention so the guy can get on those uh, many strips. You see the little march in the concrete behind <laughs> this guy's back bike? Those are sensors in there. But our bike can't pick it up. That's why I made a joke about too many carbon bikes. So we're trying to tell the driver he's he starts to come around us. Have you heard me say he wanted you to trigger the light? No, no, no. He was going to go around us. So now the, when he moved up, the light changed. Ordinarily, if it's clear, I just go. But uh, I guess Kurt just wanted to do everything by the book. Because if there weren't a car there, we'd have to end up just going when it was clear. Because there wasn't a signal to push. The pedestrian signal will also turn down. So in a little while, I thank the guy. That's the guy in the, in the bimmer there. 
triggered the life force. He thought we were motioning for him to go around us. There's a guy riding a fixie in the group. He ended up talking to us about the channel, so we gave him the name. And at the stop, I even typed the name in his phone. I rode a fixed gear bike early in my cycling career. Uh, I used to go to the track out west, west Houston. I really only used it at the track. I didn't like using it on the road that much. I think it's somewhere here where I was telling this guy to look at it. This guy could stop faster than our brakes with the fix. And the guy behind him ended up... Yeah. Him. He's got to fix it so he stops a lot faster. So, yeah. Yeah, guy, I so just give him some room. What's up, man? What's up? How you doing? You all right? Yeah. I told the guy behind him to yeah. not follow yeah. him too closely. Where was? That's what the and he comes is. back, sits see him move yeah. back, yeah. and then he tells me, oh, yeah, I usually hang at the yeah. back anyway. Yeah, I got to choose the Chatter for I was telling him about his pink wheel. Yeah, I was just letting him know. He didn't know. You can stop a lot faster than he can. Yeah. So he didn't, that's why I heard him. A fixed gear requires a lot of back pressure when you're stopping. So I think it's more tiring. Back in the day, they used to claim there was a claim that it taught you how to pedal smoother. Um, you know, it's unsubstantiated, of course. But, you know, I just used it when I used to do track races. A lot of people use them in the city. He had a, a bag on him, so I asked him if he were a bike messenger. He said, no, you've got the bag. He laughed about it. We'll come up on a guy riding a fat tire bike here. It's on the right. As we roll by, I, I greet him. Park on the right. All the parks are full today. Everybody was out enjoying the day. The lanes blocked by our car, so we changed lanes. The guy on the left in the blue, the one who had, I had told to watch out for the fixie. Uh, when you get to a ride, you can kind of tell. We've been, you know, I'm an old dog, been riding for a while. You can tell who's new, and I could tell he was inexperienced. And so I wanted him to just be aware. And I will point out later, his fit needs to be dialed. Uh, when it gets hard and, he, and when you have to work hard, he, he rocks even more because he can't reach the bottom of the pedal. I don't know if you can tell. He's a pedal, pedal, and then he will stop. I noticed he wasn't pedaling continuously. He, he was pedaling, pedaling, and stopping. At this point in the ride, I hadn't noticed that I'm back there chatting with that guy on the fixie. Because right now, we're just kind of rolling the rides easy. This light is very short. It changes to green as we approach. And then I move up from the back. The camera makes it seem I'm further back than I, I, I really was. You can see it's yellow. we go through it's a short line so we all got through I checked to make sure everybody got through okay 
watch the guy on the left you will see him just looking for a comfortable spot and if you watch him the, 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 the saddle high I end up doing a replay on it so you guys this will help you kind of self-diagnose your issues so if you go and see a fitter you're gonna know what to focus on this guy in the blue up here you see he's not moving his hips not rocking on the left the guy on the right needs some work too you, you can't help but notice that you know I work with fit all the time I, I spot those things because when the saddle's too high you can't generate power and so when you get shown up is when you have to go really hard and you have to dig then you start reaching down and rocking your hip to get to the bottom of the stroke because you want to recruit those big muscles in the back of your leg that's why you rock yeah. Paul and I shooting the breeze here, doing a lane change. I use my hip to move that bike where you saw it. it you end up just gliding when the bike fits. There's a tournament going on. We're going through the golf course at Pine Lakes. And uh, because of the tournament, as we see, they, all these cars parked over here. Normally, the roads are clear. So their parking lot is over earth. And so people are parking on the street for the tournament. Whenever there's a golf tournament, it looks like this. Paul and I shooting the breeze about the announcements and you know the things that these guys do in the group and so forth we're just kind of messing around that's what he's laughing at we're talking about different things i don't remember all of it but we're just you know having fun we hang back as early in the ride the pace is not hot my concern here at this point is this light going to change because usually we have to push the pedestrian signal but it turns green even though there wasn't a car so that was great Roll through this is Kirkendall, Kirkendall Road. We're heading back towards where we reside. We're going back north where we live. It says northeast up there, which is correct. You can see the sun to the right there. This is the guy here I started to observe at this point. Every time he'd pedal, he'd pedal, pedal, stop. If you look at Oscar in front of him, also in blue, Oscar's not rocking. You look at the guy behind here, his torso's rolling. That rolling motion is your body looking for the bottom of the stroke. You're trying to reach. What ends up happening is your groin area, you get the shorts start pinching and everything starts getting uncomfortable. That's how you get saddle sores. It gets clearer when we go through this intersection. So what I do is I do a, 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 a replay. I like to point these things out so a lot of riders to the channel may be new so they can see that. The reason is a lot of the bike shops feel that people think they're upselling them when they talk about bike fit. So a lot of them don't offer it anymore. So all the riders on this channel are watching the video, I like to point these things out. You're not being upsold. You need a fit. You have to be fitted to your bike. If you buy the bike, they don't know you. Like so if they school, offer a free yeah, fit, West fine, but it, the free yeah, fits are not usually the best quality. Oh, wow. oh yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah. We so we're shooting the breeze man. with the like, the, the guy on the fixie bike. Yeah. He's yeah. asking us about the there. channel, <laughs> asking us about where we ride. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the, the cool thing is, you get one car every yeah. ten minutes. Yeah, you got the highway to yourself. Do you have a shoulder or no? I just use the lane. If they have a shoulder, we use it, but most. You got one car every 10 minutes, who cares? Exactly. Yeah. You and the cows and people's farmhouses. Beautiful, man. Yeah, that's what we do there. So I think this is where that I end up uh, doing the replay because it just is very clear. This is interesting. Maybe in a little bit. I think it's the next intersection. But you can see him. If you look, he's, a, he's moving a little bit. But in a little while, we get to another intersection shortly, and that's where I, I saw it pronounced. 
and I felt like, okay, I'll share this with the guys on the channel. But just watch him. He kind of looks like he's sitting on a like those balls that you play at the gym, the big, uh, uh, I don't know what they call them. They're like rubber balls that you can sit on and do exercise with. He kind of looks like he's rolling on something as opposed to just being anchored. You look at the guy on the left, that's a better fit. So we're just hanging off the back chat. The pace is not hard. We got the wind behind us. The wind's blowing from the south. So whenever the pace is not hot, we we'll do that. And I, I had told Paul, I said, when you go to a ride, a lot of the stronger riders, they're just sitting in the back chatting. Save your energy. Don't go and start showing off and kill yourself. Because when they're ready to go, you, you'll need that energy. So that's the thing, when you go to rides, try to identify who the, the mean, mean riders are and ride hard when they're riding hard because that's when the brakes happen. So right here is where I did the replay. We go through this line, look, look at him, the guy on the right, and look at the guy on the left. See the difference? Look how this guy's rocking. I'll do a replay right there. We start to go hard, so he's reaching. He's trying to get his power. He's strong, but he can't access it. So look at his body roll. That's what happens. You ride below your potential with a bad fit. And he has to stop. So he, he, he stretches his leg to take a break because of all the effort he did. Look at him, he's still doing it. I know. So what ends up happening, if you can't reach the bottom of the stroke, the harder the ride, the quicker you get dropped because you're only using your quadriceps. And if that goes on for a long time, you just cannot sustain it. The quadriceps get tired. So he's riding below his potential. The fact that he's able to hold the speeds, and another thing I will point out, he's not drafting very well. When we start to go faster, he, this guy's reading us. He's leaving a gap, a significant gap, so he doesn't know how to draft. So that, that tells me, okay, he's a new rider. And Paul and I talked about it, that the ride leader needs to teach these guys. But you know, not everybody's into that. I like I like to show people how to do things better as opposed to having them come out week after week and fight the win. So I guess that's why I have why we started the channel. So, you know, stuff not for everybody. But if, if any, any, anybody that rides with us for a period of time, I start pointing those things out because I want them to ride better, smarter. This guy was very interested in the kind of riding Paul and I are doing. He's very interested in the channel. That's what we're talking about back there. And uh, in a short while, I end up telling him, you know, go on YouTube, set up an account so you can subscribe because he asked about the channel at the stop he brought his phone and gave it to us to for me to type the name of the channel in there uh, he was worried about misspelling it or whatever so he was definitely interested that's why we're talking he's asking all kinds of questions so at this point now we're getting into the business of writing we're leaving the frequent intersection area of all parts of town. I know. <laughs> Tracks here. Yeah. So we're done talking. He rolls up. I'm sitting next to Paul here. Yeah. It's kind of cold. Oh yeah. Your name's not really Bill Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's still talking about the channel. He was just yeah. very into the channel, so um, we tried to get to get fun yeah. in writing. Exactly. You know, good. yeah. I yeah. explained to him the purpose of the channel and all yeah, of that. The channel is great, man. It's growing, yeah. and uh, every Saturday, his elbow Sunday, looks kind of hyper extended. We will ride and just get a footage for <laughs> everybody's different. For the viewers, and uh, he narrates over it, and you know, give you the perspective of a book line, tips. Yeah. Everybody is blown away when they see the gimbal. They're they're concerned that we can carry that yeah. thing and ride. And Paul and I talk about it. this is where I'm telling the guy to sign up and get an account, and so he can subscribe because it's very interesting. 
That was the bump last time. Yeah, we went over a bump, I pointed it out. So, after that, we're getting into the space. It's gonna be just picking up, I'm looking around. I can kinda sense when the action is getting live. That's the guy on the right I was talking about. If you notice, he's just, he's, he's sliding back further and further. Whenever we go fast, he's not happy. Because really, when, you, when you're riding fast, it exacerbates a bad position. All the little jingling issues come out. You see right there, the pedal pedal stop, lock his leg down. It's not comfortable. Look at his upper body move as he pedals. He's, 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 a, he's in decent shape. Just for me, looking at how he's riding, he just needs that bike to fit him better. He's not comfortable. His hands are getting numb. He pulled that left that hand down to wiggle those fingers. I've seen all those tricks. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> and he's not that far off from a good fit. Just, 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 and it's the, it's, and that's what makes the difference. It's the little changes. That's why I call it getting dialed in. They don't have to be major. I roll up here. Look at my cadence. If you got a bad fit, that's almost impossible to do. You're not going to be spinning at 120. I knew I was going to be riding with those crazy pros the next day. That was my plan. So I was saving my legs the whole ride. And the, the second reason was I wanted to ride hard in the pack. Since they were limiting the speeds, I had planned to just keep my cadence high the whole time. You can see my cadence. By keeping my cadence high, I'm stressing my aerobic system. You see my heart rate jump through the roof. My legs are not working that hard, but my aerobic system is. Glass! It's glass, so I moved to the left. It's not a hurt glass. Move by the yellow line. I don't want anything to do with that. Don't need a flat, don't need a cut. Got some new tires on those bikes. Don't need a cut. So at this point, we're, we're gonna ride here for a bit and then come to where the road becomes two lanes. And whenever we do single file, the speed pick up. There's a stop sign here. I stay back so I don't have to unclip. One of the first two people need to unclip. Nothing coming, we unclip, we go through as a group. That's the right leader on the left, Kurt. I've known Kurt for years. The guy on the right has a good fit. You can, you can see his body is not moving. The guy on the left, it's decent too. That's a Eduardo. Kurt's calling a single file because the road is going to narrow as we go over the tracks. There are tracks coming up. Every time the roads get bumpy, I stand up and get the weight off my wheels. I don't have to worry about truing them that often. When you do that, you save your wheels, you save your rear. So I move up behind Kurt here. My focus was to stress my aerobic system, get a great workout because I knew that the next day I was going to be riding again. That would keep my legs fresh. So you will notice that as we go through here, my cadence is just significantly faster than everybody else. That's not easy to do. It stresses your system. You burn more calories. So you need to make sure you're eating and all of that. I'm just looking back to see if there are cars back there. I like to know what's going on back there because when you're in the pace line, if the pace line slows, I want to know. So you see those guys back there, there's a truck back there and another red car. They stayed behind us for about almost a mile. They didn't try to pass or anything. It says double yellow, but most other people ignore it. 
they still tried to pass. Those guys did. We're moving at about 20, 21, 22 miles an hour, something like that. But the guy in the truck was going to the store. There's a store at the next intersection, maybe at maybe about a kilometer down the road. And it made sense to him to not try to pass. You don't gain that much time. And then even uh, the ride leader noticed that and made a comment about it. And I made a joke. I said, I think he's from Europe because Americans don't behave like that. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear it. <laughs> and all my focus is on here is keeping my cadence up. I want to keep my legs fresh for the next day. So if you have a two, two, two rides back to back, that's what you want to do. One day or early, most of the ride, keep your cadence up. Doesn't mean you can't go hard from time to time, but not for the whole ride. Keep your cadence up if you can, so that the next day your legs will not be as tired. Because your, your aerobic system requires, I mean, re recovers quicker. So right here is where we, we turn left, and then Kurt makes the comment about the cars that have been behind us. They never pass. There's the one guy in the truck leading the way. He turned into that sub that uh, station right there, a little convenience store. On the the guy right. turned like he's like anybody else. Is Did that truck sit behind us the whole entire time? Yeah. Wow. Taking the patient for me today. Oh, it's probably from Europe. It's <laughs> <laughs> hey, probably from Europe. It's American. <laughs> Americans don't behave like that. <laughs> <laughs> Americans are always in a rut. Right here, I think I did another replay. I want you guys to see. That snap, watch. Boom. Look at my cadence. I'll do the replay again, watch the cadence, just to get to that gap. We're both going and I just take off. Look at my cadence. That's Tuesday's workout. You gotta work that into your program because sometimes you need that kind of snap get out of trouble or close a gap or you know play with your mates that was an anaerobic effort for 10 seconds if that and then i sat down and just wound it up Since we're not sprinting on this ride, I figured I would do get my sprints in little spurts. Just work on my snap. That stresses your aerobic system. Your heart rate goes up real quickly, and if you're fit, it comes down real quickly. So I continue to keep my cadence up. If you look at my cadence compared to everybody else, I'm pedaling faster, significantly faster. Stresses your system. You have to build up to that if that's something you want to add to your repertoire or your toolkit. It's good to have that when you close the gaps. Came in handy the day after this ride with those crazy guys. But because I was using cadence, I did not blow my legs. And I stayed within myself so I was able to finish with those guys. So I will definitely be back. I gotta find a way to get it on film for you guys. Besides our group ride, this next week, Paul and I are going to join the uh, the, wood, the the same guys, the Woodlands guys, the intermediate group. Some of the guys from the intermediate group were riding with these guys. They were the ones I was picking up after they got dropped because they went beyond their limits. And so I picked them up and we rode together, rode back to the stop on the way out. So they have a ride in Montgomery next week. We will be visiting them. We should be able to film. I don't think they go as crazy fast as the other guys. They're not slow by any means. They're faster than this ride you've seen. And they don't have any restrictions. You know, they're safe. They stop for everything. That was another thing when I rode with the, the pro guys on Sunday after this ride. I was telling Paul in the evening we talked. I said, as fast and as crazy as it was, I never felt unsafe. Everybody was riding. There was nobody looking around, distracted. It was like a race. So everybody was focused on the business of riding as a result. Everything was smooth. As fast as it was, it was smooth. Because if you're not smooth, you will be dropped. So everybody had to stay focused. 
that was what I took from it. I was like, man, that is so nice. At that level, all these guys, they, you know, they, they work. They're concerned about safety because they ride a lot. Yeah, I'm talking to another guy. The, the guy in front here with these fixie, I, I had mentioned to Paul that I thought this conversation he's having with that guy, I thought he was talking to that guy. Because the guy on the left of me is the one that brought his phone for me to type the name in. And I had told Paul, I said, well, I had already told him what the name was and everything, so why would he have been asking you and misspell you know, mispronouncing? This was the guy that was mispronouncing because I had misspoken to Paul thinking it was that guy in the front, the fixie guy. So it was this guy who was mispronouncing. You're gonna see this shot, you know, sideboard. Yeah. So all these guys were interested in the channel. What we what we notice is when people see us holding the camera in the group, it kind of blows their mind. Like, how can you hold that and ride? Uh, you know, when your fit is right, you don't need your hands other than the guide the bike. But when your fit's not right, you got to hold those bars tight. And I think it, it bothers people. That they're concerned. Now, how can you do that and still ride? Because they see the gimbal and you know it looks bulky and whatever, but it's actually very manageable. It has its own stick, which is lightweight. The whole setup is a little less than a pound. But because of that, it keeps the picture stable. So what I'm trying to try to do for you guys, that I will try to attach the camera to my bike. It's not going to be attached to the gimbal. It's just going to be on a GoPro mount attached to my handlebars when I ride with those guys, just to get pictures because. The way they ride, I don't have time to take shots and sights and all of that. So I'm just going to see how that pans out. But we'll still do the regular filming on Saturday with their... This is Paul's neighbor greeting us. That's Paul's neighborhood. He was greeting us as we went by. As much as they bug cyclists, a lot of people are enamored when they see a smoothly moving group of cyclists on the road. But we're we're kind of in the, in the city, we're still in town. So they don't get to see this very often. So this is like, you know, spotting a, a bald eagle or something, you know, I guess. We're getting extinct maybe, I don't know. So it's kind of cool. We got a lot of greetings on this ride. I think it's just because we were very organized and law abiding and all of that kind of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're gonna try to mix things up uh, we're still gonna do our rides like we always do but we're going to start having at least two visits a month for the faster groups and so we get some variety for you guys to see group dynamics you know you don't want to do group rides too too much you want to mix it into your schedule I didn't do too much group riding when I was competing. I trained solo and then I went to the races. And then whatever I needed to work on, I went back and worked on it and came back to another race. I don't like people get too familiar with what I'm doing. I always mix it up. So a couple of times a month is plenty. And each time I go back, they'll notice the difference. Those boys that have me stretched out on Sunday. I've got plans. <laughs> I'll be <do> that. <laughs> I got the bug again to go back and ride hard. So it was just good to see that my riding has paid off over the years. It's been a long time since I've ridden like that. It's a different kind of riding, different level. That's Eduardo on the left. He and uh, the ride leader had talked about something, and I guess he was working on something on his own. He went. I told Paul that uh, it didn't mean anything because it's kind of like nobody knows what you're doing. And so right here we're going up this climb, just steady. As far as I, I felt anyway, it felt steady. The, the boys on Sunday, anytime the road went up like this, 3% that we just did, it was a sprint. They would sprint for 15 seconds, sit down, and push hard. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week, because I'm going back. 
<laughs> like anaerobic efforts, you have to tune your body for that. That's why you train based on your goals. So I'm just gonna sharpen up what what's already there because when the ride leader came by on the way back and he told me, you know, in just loud enough for the whole group to hear that I don't know what you're talking about. You need four weeks to ride with us. He said, you can ride with us. You're already there now. You're close. That's just what he said. It was good to hear. He was like, man, you're, you're, you're here. You're riding with us. So I just need to throw in more anaerobic sprinting stuff. That's what they're doing. I, I don't like to just ride. I like to be one of the guys making moves. So that was kind of hard to just sit in there. My goal is not to sit in. My goal is to chase down. I love that part of it. Chase down stuff, attack, all that. So. But, uh, you know, I had to be realistic. These boys, some of them, I found out the ride leader is a semi-pro. What it means is he's a few sponsors away from doing it full time. That's what it means. He, he's already riding with other pros. And this is a guy who, who could leave the breakaway, come and pull me back to the breakaway. That's, uh, that's some good fitness there. You can catch the breakaway by yourself. As fast as those guys were going, yeah. That's a different level there. I didn't find out from him. I found out from another rider I met after I left and I was riding home came across a guy Paul and I had met a year ago. His name is Frederick from Belgium. And he was the one that told me, oh yeah, I rode with those guys. Because he asked me what I had been doing. He hadn't seen me in a year. And I said, well, yeah, I just rode with the Woodlands guys, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, I rode with those guys. And I made the mistake of going to take a pull. He said, they dropped me. I never saw them again. I told him, I said, well, I didn't go to the front. I said, they were going crazy fast. And when I mentioned the guy's name who pulled me back, he said, oh yeah, he's semi-pro. I said, really? I said, okay. I told him, I said, yeah, he was pulling me back to the bunch so hard, I told him to go. I told him, I can't, I can't ride at this pace to get there right now, and I was gonna blow. So that explained a lot. And to find out from somebody else just by chance, I mean, I kind of already knew the guy was fit, but he didn't sing his own praises or anything. He didn't tell me anything about what level he was at. So it was good to know I'm riding with pro-level guys. There are two or three guys animating everything in the group. There wasn't the whole group, everybody else hanging on. So, just to get a few more of those under my belt. It's perfect kind of riding for the summer. I will incorporate those kind of rides. It was starting on Saturday with the guys that were there that back off the pace on Saturday a bit, but hard. It's gonna be hard, so I know. So I told Paul to modify his training this week to get his legs ready. So we can go out there and have some fun. Since this ride had no sprint points, what was happening is every time the road went up, people would accelerate. Right here, I kind of move up, make sure nobody's on my side. I always look with a right or left if I'm gonna make a move. I always assume something's there. See me look again. That's the way you have to ride around all the cyclists. Don't assume it's empty, verify. I think somewhere here I move up and to the right. There's a gap there. Yeah, I think right there I move over to the right in front of Paul. The, the water you see on the pavement there, that's people just running these sprinkler systems in the middle. The water, the, the grass in the median there, and it just runs off because the soil in the Houston area is like clay. Once it gets saturated, it can't take any more water. And we see that everywhere in the summer. It's just a waste of water. It just really bugs me. You know, there are areas in the world short of water. We're wasting them on grass. need to adjust the timer on those things. They're running too long. The grass doesn't need any more. We had accelerated up here until the light changed and we waited here. I think I speeded up in a little while because it ends up being just a very 
slow light. Yeah, right here, I speed it up. I was having trouble clipping in at this intersection for some reason. I don't know what was going on. So you see all these guys coming around. I just stayed to the right. Got it sorted out. There's a slight descent over here. It's very slight but you get really quick speed and when you're behind the when you're in a bunch behind people going downhill you get sucked along so what I usually do is I stay out to the right or in the middle so I can catch some wind and don't have to use my brakes because you always go faster than the person in front because they're blocking the wind and you're not there was a guy that posted on Strava after I loaded the ride for the, the one that I did with the pros after this ride on sun, you know, on Saturday, the, the Sunday ride. Uh, he said that, uh, I don't remember his name right off, but he said that I was an inspiration. That he said, as somebody who's almost, or who's going to be 60 this year, you're an inspiration. And that really was cool to read. And I'm glad that other people that see what I'm doing here can... Uh, get out the door or stay with a program I think that's a great plus uh, don't don't let your age stop you especially a sport like cycling cycling being a non weight bearing sport you can literally do it for the rest of your life so don't let the number of your age stop you just make sure your bike fits you and you're having no pains because you should not be having any pains This guy's asking Paul what kind of app we're using to edit. Uh, people seem to be really enamored with that camera throughout this ride. And, you know, as I've mentioned earlier, and they had all these questions. Uh, and it's kind of like, um, I'm not sure during a ride I want to be talking about yeah, editing heard. software. I just want to ride. Right there, I tell Paul that I hear his chain in between ears. And he said, yeah, he acknowledged that. And he, dealt with it. Almost like the shift wasn't fully completed. <laughs> I spent many years perfecting my skills on bike fit. There is no book for it. There is no school for it. You either do an apprenticeship or you just invest the time and reverse engineer to understand it. It's small adjustments that make the difference. The key is knowing what direction to go with your adjustments. That's the key. So there are many fitters out there that don't study it as deeply. The one guy I, I like is uh, Steve Hall. So when I was learning many years ago, I liked his approach. He didn't rely on gadgets. He really understands it. I own his ebook I bought many years ago. And it helped confirm a lot of beliefs I had ascertained from many books I've read and, and things that I've reverse engineered. It was good to read in his book that I was on the right track many years ago. I was my first client. So as I competed, I tweaked my fit and I went ahead and invested in the time to understand things. Because my coach didn't care for fitting, he just gave me workouts. And as my bike got more comfortable, I really enjoyed cycling even more. And that's what I've put on this channel. That once you get your bike done, you measure it and you record it for posterity so that you know.
the, the, the frame I'm riding, the seat tube is 70 degrees. I don't think they make any in the stores that is set at 70. Because it's 70, I can use a straight seat post. I don't have to use a setback seat post. And it's 70 because I have long uh, femur bones. My legs are long, but my femur more so. My upper thigh, I believe, is very long. And so I sit back to have the leverage I need to turn those pedals. That's what it's based on. Before you get a bike, make sure you get the frame that was built for your body type. If I were to get a time trial bike, I want to be sitting in the same position. And that's why I generate the power. A lot of the riders don't get that choice. So I've read articles where the pros actually feel that they prefer their road bike more than the time drop box. I'm talking about road riders. They don't spend much time on those time drop bikes. Somebody asked me to do a video about how the pros are always scooting back on the time drop bikes. It's on the list, but I don't know how much of a video it would be because they're scooting back because they don't like where they're sitting. <laughs> you know, that's it. They don't like where that saddle is. They're sitting on a tip because the UCI restricts them to within five, I think it's five centimeters. They can't be any closer than five centimeters. And with the aggressive angles on those time trial bikes, they're having to place that saddle within the rules which puts them on the tip. There are very few of them that have stable positions. So they, they don't like the fit. I think it was, I I'm not sure it was a guy on Facebook that asked. They're scooting back because they don't like where they're sitting. I think in a little while we get a driver blowing a horn at another driver. There's just two of them on the road. I saw a car whether that's what kind of jogged my memory, but it's a Saturday morning, it's not busy. I don't know what was going on. This is weird. It's somewhere in here coming up. It got our attention because it was like an angry horn. <laughs> Slowing down for intersection. I, I slow down early because I think yeah, this is here, right here, right there. Just, this other BMW is in front. I don't know what, what's going on there among them. We just kind of looked over, kept on riding. I looked back again. And like, it's just the two of you on the road. What's the point of that? You can go around that car if you're in, in a hurry. I don't understand. That's how conflicts start. Some people in this state. They, they take offense to you blasting your horn at them. I think I've mentioned in other videos, they do crazy stuff on the road, they shoot at each other. You know, that's the last thing I need. I don't bother, when I'm driving my car, I don't bother anybody. I want to get from point A to point B as safely as possible. Funny, I feel safer on my bike than I do in my car. It's kind of sad to say that. That's because the speeds they carry on the freeways and the way they drive at 75, 80 miles an hour, the, the things they do, they act like the laws of physics don't apply. So when I'm driving, I only drive. I'm looking out for them, everybody they know, their whole family, everybody. <laughs> I drive defensively, offensively. <laughs> anyway, we turn here and uh, the, the pace picks up a little bit. We're single file, it's a narrow road. This is how you ride for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I take my driving very seriously. <laughs> I don't want to hit anybody, I don't want anybody hitting me. There are some lights on some bicycles here that really caught my eye and you'll get to see it when we stop. We filmed it at the stop, that's when I noticed it when I was editing the clips. They look just like motorcycle lamps, but they're sized down. This is the guy I was talking about. You see the gap between him and Paul? He's working harder than he should be. So with just a few tweaks, man, that guy can develop into a good rider because he has the abilities. You know, we're cruising at 20 miles an hour or so. And 
working hard with a bad fit and everything. So if you tweak him and show him some stuff, man, he, he can be a robust rider. That's the way my brain works. I see stuff. When I met Paul, that's the first thing I told him. You're riding below your potential. He was getting dropped in the UMC rides, you know, the, with, with uh, a, a saddle that was five centimeters too high. First thing I told him was, you're riding below your potential. And I'm sure that encouraged him to hear that. You know, but I was I was being honest. I could tell by his body type and everything. I said, if you can, he was he was hanging for a while. I said, but with such a position, I was blind. I said, how can you even ride? I even asked him that. How can you even ride this bike? And he said, everything hurts when I get home. I was like, I don't, you know, I don't blame you. I mean, I thought I couldn't ride a bike like that, set up like that. Those geniuses of the bike shop have been doing stuff like that. So I'm sure when I told him you're riding below your potential, it gave him encouragement. You know, in three months, Paul was in the breakaway in a group that he had been getting dropped in. I was blown away. And the first thing I told him to buy is buy yourself an indoor trainer. Once he got his indoor trainer, his riding went to the next level because he could be consistent. He could ride at two in the morning if it felt like it. That's when he rides. He gets up, rides, and goes to work. His shift is different. You know, that, it wasn't because it was on that shift. I just believe every rider should have an indoor trainer. It just gives you more flexibility in when you can ride, not depending on going outside. Many times it can be perfect outside. I don't feel like going outside. I just jump on the train. I don't want to put on nothing. No, I just jump on the train. So yeah. So if you don't have a trainer and you want to improve, get one. Because you can use it for not just training. You can use it to set your position, check how your cleats feel, check how your saddle feels. You can check. Do anything you want at any time at your disposal. So get an indoor trainer. That's a good investment for every cyclist. You will not lose money on that. But get a good one. <laughs> They're not all created equal, all like men. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. I guess I've recovered from Sunday's ride with those maniacs. We pull in here, and uh, look how beautiful this courtyard is. I love that tree, the save that tree. I always move my bike away when I stop with the group. I always move my bike away from traffic. Meaning, if most people are going left, I go right. <laughs> Just always do that. And I've got the saddle touching and the handlebars touching. I always have two points touching. So if somebody brushes up against my bike, it's not going to fall easily. Let's set it here. No, turn so we're it putting the camera down so we can film the yard because we're going to go use the restroom and do other things. And Paul had me move it to where it wasn't directly in the sun. It's a warm morning. That's why I have my jersey three quarters zipped down. Get that airflow when you're riding. There's the light I'm talking about. Look at that beam. That's a light on Kurt's bicycle. I got to call him to ask him for the brand name because uh, I'm really interested in I like the beam. Even when it's steady, it looks like the size of a motorcycle light. The last thing I need to do is buy more stuff, but that beam just caught my eyes. A big round, look at that, big round beam. And he left it on, it's just blinking. And so he said he runs it daytime, he runs it all the time when he's riding. Especially if he's riding solo. And light does catch the other road users' attention. Light travels, I uh, believe, further than sound. You'll see light before you hear something. So, yeah, uh, not that the lights we have currently are dogs, but I'm always open to new and better things or improved things. And that beam just caught my eye. It's a full beam. And I think the film, I speed it up here, but it will slow down and you'll, you'll see it. I, I ride a lot. I ride about 8 to 12 hours a week, depending on how my week's going. So I'm out there often enough. Look at that beam. Normal speed. Look at the size of the beam. That's what I like. How big and round. Like a motorcycle light. Daytime running light. Look at that. So I was like, man. 
He has it attached under his GoPro mount somehow. That's where it was. Seemed to be a good spot to put it so it's not on the bars. I didn't ask him for the brand name, but I, I may call the shop and ask them. I speed it up here again. Paul's walking over there chatting with the guy who rode the Fixie. He was very interested in the channel. <laughs> so I told him subscribe so you don't miss anything. There's a lot going on. You know, review the archives. There's a lot already there. I'm using a restroom. Paul used the restroom first while I was outside. Then I went in there and there was a line of people waiting. It's a nice clean, it's like a, it's a restaurant for breakfast. Breakfast uh, restaurant, very nice in there. And so I used the restroom. We always have one person outside to keep the eye on the camera because we didn't ask anybody to look at it. I mean, to watch it for us. So he went in, I was outside. When he came out, then I went in. I came to look at the amount of battery life on the camera. So he saw me looking at the lens. We ended up running out before we planned. I, I plan on using one battery. It just makes the editing easier. I don't, you know, I don't need three hours of footage. The card will take up three hours. Three this hours is very months. nice in there. Yeah, man. And the people are very hospitable. Mm -hmm. We were very welcome here. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady even came outside to greet Kurt. She's like, large group. Yeah. Very, and very accommodating. They're her. happy that we're here. I like yeah. these kind of stops. They welcome our presence. They like the business that we bring because yeah. that's a breakfast place. I'm going to go back there to eat. In my, I'm going to drive my family there to eat breakfast, check out the food. So, you know, that, that's how you run a business. Because we're riding a bike doesn't mean in, in other countries, people ride their bikes everywhere. They ride the bike to the restaurant. People want to look down on people on a bike. I don't understand that. <laughs> what does a car mean? <laughs> mean nothing. I've never been enamored by people yeah. who try to impress me with things or what they have or the car they drive or the house they live in. I hope you like where you live. Enjoy. That's for you. <laughs> I, I hope you like your car. You're in it. Very, very pleasant, man. I'm telling Kurt that those people, the folks are very pleasant in the restaurant. We're going across, there are cars coming, the stop sign is only for us, so I'm letting people know cars are coming, they're not close. The speeds are low, this is a small little town, they call Old Town Spring. It's old school, a lot of shops, like the one, the, the restaurant we went into. They have a lot of festivals here in the spring. People, you know, bands and people dressed up. You know, Renaissance festivals. Yeah. They probably will go back the same way. Yeah. Okay. So. They probably go back gospel. Yeah. That's how we went back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the motorcycles went by with real loud music on the radio. That's what Teresa was saying. Another driver with radios like that. That's Teresa and her husband Terry on the left. During the ride, I did not recognize Terry. But on Strava, his name showed up. And then I realized that's her husband. They have the same kind of light on their bikes. I think they have the same light that uh, Kurt has on his bike. Because I could tell from the beams, and you'll see it later. Shortly in the ride, you'll see their beams. The beams are just round and full. And, uh, okay, that's kind of nice, very visible. And theirs were steady, it wasn't blinking. As we turn, there's cars coming, so they, they slow down for us. Through this part of town, it's, you know, the speeds are low. This is still Old Town Spring. We're on the east side of 45. There's nothing that interesting east of 45. Everything's flat. It's kind of boring. 
sounds like Plano in Dallas, flat. These guys left a huge gap, so I just rode up. If you want to be smooth on your bike, start with your saddle. Make sure it fits your undersides comfortably. Make sure you're sitting in it. Make sure it blends with the underside of your body. Because then you can relax and focus on riding. That's where it starts. And then make sure after you're happy with your saddle that your shoes and your feet are happy, meaning the cleats are in the right position on the shoe to not move you from your spot on your saddle because you're locked in. So you do your saddle, perfect it, and then focus on tweaking your cleat position. If you're doing it yourself, it's going to take some time. I'm stating that because people think they can do it once and it would be perfect. Oh, it gets better, it feels better because you had a bad position, but you got to keep paying attention. Every, there should be one ride every week where you're just listening to how your body feels on the bike. Usually your recovery ride on Monday or your rest ride on Friday, whatever. But easy rides are when you tweak things. When you're going hard, it should already be feeling good. That's not the time to be messing with stuff. If you look at my saddle where I sit, and I've said that before, I hope we get another shot from the side so you can see better. The folds of the saddle mesh with my hip bones to where it's fully engaged. It's kind of hard to explain. It's almost like you put your foot in a shoe and the arch just blends with your foot. That's what I'm trying to say. If that saddle doesn't suit your underside, you don't want to try a different model. And you will find that most riders, once they find a saddle that suits their body or their anatomy, they don't change brands. I've already told Paul I'm going to get some extra SMP saddles and just keep them. Look at that saddle. So when I'm riding, I don't think about anything, I just ride. And that's why we can film when <laughs> we're comfortable. So our hands are relaxed. We're not supporting or trying to unweight any other part of our body. So then you can drink comfortably, you can unzip your shirt, do a lot of things. There's the light. Yeah, it's the same light that uh, Kurt has. So I'm definitely going to be calling him. I want to test that. Maybe I can do it for the channel. I don't know who makes that brand. I'll contact him and see if he has uh, some information on the manufacturer. Maybe they can send me one to test. I like the beam. The beam is a round, solid beam that's very visible. This lady said, she made a comment. She's like, oh, no, you don't. Something like that. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> she wanted nothing to do with us. It's a young lady. <laughs> you guys, go ahead. <laughs> she didn't want anything to do with us. <laughs> Uh, we laughed about that. We don't have enough people riding bikes in this city. They don't see this that often. So that's what we're laughing about here. Just chat. And this is what I do. I guess that's how God made me. I, I can talk to anybody. I can talk to the garbage man or the president just like a guy I don't care I don't I don't ask anybody what do you do on these rides I don't care what your job is you're a guy on a bike that's all I see or a lady on the bike that's it I don't want to know what job you have or car you drive I have no interest in that we just ride and we talk you know I'm always messing with people on these rides you know, so that guy and I, I've never met him. That's the first time we just shared a few words. We laughed and he rolled up. That's what it's about, man. I think that's what life is about. 
Some people get too hung up on titles. That doesn't mean anything. You know? I, I'd prefer to be a bum and have all my time to myself than to have a big paying job and no time to do anything that I love doing. When you're rich, you have time. That's what it means. Wealth is time. And so some people transfer it into, okay, if I have a lot of money. Well, usually if you have money, it gives you more choices. You can do other things. But really, you should use that to give yourself time. If you have money and you don't have time to live, get rid of the money. <laughs> go, go live. It's the wrong kind of money. <laughs> you need time to live. You don't need stuff. I've been decluttering for more than a decade. <laughs> Both of my cars are older than all my children. <laughs> I have a 20 year old car. Let's see. Yeah, I have a 20 year old car and a 19 year old car. They still run fine. They're in good condition because, you know, I protected them as far as putting those 3M film on the front and all that. It still look good. So I like my stuff to look good. And uh, Allen keep, keeps them running, but they're old cars. But they run great. They're machines. So, they have said that before, but it keeps my life simple. I got no car payments to make. That's why when I'm driving, somebody act crazy, I stop if I have to go on. I don't need I don't need anybody damaging my car that I love. I enjoy driving. I give them I give up the right away. And you should. If it's endangering you, what what good is the right away? <laughs> Here lies Charlie. You died with a right of way. What's the point of that? Look at the light. Look at the light. That's the light I'm talking about. Look at that beam. Daytime. Sunny day. Look at the beam. That's that's what caught my eye, guys. Look at that. That's Teresa and Terry. That's the light that Kurt has. They must have gotten it from the bike shop. So I'm definitely going to be calling to find out more about that light. There, there, there is blinking back there. There's a third guy that has it. All of these guys, they must have gotten it from the bike shop. And there's another one, there's a fourth one there. Look how visible that is. I don't know who that is. All I see is the light. That beam. Teresa's blinking, her husband's steady. And then there's two other people back there. So there's like five of them that have these lights. Look at that thing. I definitely gotta get me one of those. My wife will wanna hear that because I've exceeded my cycling budget for 2018. <laughs> So I will be calling when I'm done with the narration of this video to get the name of that light so I can do some investigating. Because that beam is effective. It's almost, it's like a, a, a motorcycle light for the bike. If you know what I mean. The beams on a motorcycle are visible. That light is visible. And Kurt said that it was the same kind of light that the police use. So I will call the bike shop and find out. I noticed more of them as I edited the clip. I noticed his when I was uh, there and I talked to him about it because I saw the light on there. This guy here, I put the arrow on him because I want you to watch. He needs a little more power in his legs. This is what I get when I ride with people that I coach locally. Like when I would ride with Paul, I knew what kind of training he needed. That's why we did long rides. Paul did not have endurance. He'd been off for a year when I met him. So he needed a long ride. That guy, see how I passed him? We're going up the hill. He's lacking power. He's lacking strength. Anaerobic. You know, weight, weight, weight bearing. Watch him. He's looking for power. Look at his shoulders. Look at it. Look at his shoulders. Looking for power. Because we're not going that hard. But he's looking for power. Now, now listen. I turned the music off. That's him, he said, huh, Woo. It took a lot out of him, just that little effort there. If this had continued, say a longer climb, he'd be riding alone. That's how you see. And it does not matter that I saw it. If you're riding by yourself and, you, and it happens you're with a group and you're having that kind of problem, then you need to go during the week and work on strength, power in your legs, not your heart rate. Your legs need to be stronger so you can carry bigger gears and not have to rock your shoulders. If you notice, you don't see him in the picture. He was so winded and tired 
his legs needed a break. His muscular system needed a break. That's why you saw me and you saw Teresa. She came around. He's taking a break back there. Nothing's wrong with that. But that's the stuff you identify. You say, okay, I'm going to work on strength during the week so that the next ride now, he comes back to the bike park, you have a little more strength. That's how you do that. And so when I met Paul, he said he'd been off a year. He was getting dropped. We started, we got his fit dialed in. What we started doing was just riding for hours. What it did, it built his confidence while he was getting stronger. We didn't do intervals. We built his base. So you have, that's why I tell everybody, what are your, I ask them, what are your goals? There's the light. There's the light. That's the light Kurt had. You see where the light mounted on Terry's bike under Paul's arm? It's below the, it's like on, the, on some kind of like a Garmin mount. That's a good spot too. But I love the beam, so I gotta find out more about it. It's got my curiosity. The guy back there has the same light. I like where it's mounted. You can't see the beam that well there, but you, on the other shots, that's what drivers see. As we rolled through here, this guy in the blue had been pulling. He's behind me now. The guy in the in the white in front of me, I can tell he's dying because he's already fallen behind. Kurt is on the left, and he's two bike lengths in front of that guy. That guy can't stay next to Kurt. The wind and the road's going up a little bit. It's less than one percent, but the wind is blowing. We're going south, so I can see that he's dying. I'm just waiting for him. I don't know why he stayed there that long. He should have just pulled off. So I'm just sitting on his wheel. I'm watching his body language. Right here, his wheel will start to eclipse mine. And I can tell. Before he even taps out, I'm going right there. Right there. I'm already going. He just tapped his hip. Now, all I'm doing is I'm accelerating. Look at my cadence. Triple digits, I accelerate to get up to her. And you can see the gap that I opened here with this guy in the blue who had been pulling. He's gonna have to work his way back. I've, I've turned off the power, I'm already there. I'm just sitting there to Kurt. That's how much that guy has lost. So if you're pulling in that situation and you can't stay with the guy on the left in this situation, get off the front, let somebody else come up there. Don't sit there and keep falling back because you need that energy. If you notice, now there's Teresa. That guy will end up going way back because he needed the rest. I will, show, I will point him out. I'm up there with Kurt, we're riding now. 37 kilometers an hour on a grade, but well, it says minus one. But we're going into the wind, and it was hard. So once I got up there, I shifted down, you know. We're, we're gonna be turning left right here. We're turning left, and I think Paul gets a shot at the back, and we can see that guy that had been up there. Look back. There he is in the white on the left. Look how far back he went. He needed a break. There's no reason he should not have stayed up there that long. Take a few pedal strokes, get off the front. There is no law that says you got to pull long. Save your energy for when the group stretches things, and that way you'll be there. So right now, if he had been riding with a, an aggressive group, and he goes to the back like that, and we drop the hammer at the front, he would be dropped because he would not be able to respond. He was already dying at the front. Never stay at the front to where you're dying. You should leave the front feeling like you could stay there longer. That means you got more. That's important. You ain't got nothing to prove. Nobody gives a crap about your ego. You riding the bike, just ride. Know what you can do. As you improve, people will give you your kudos. They'll see, they, they may not say anything, but they can see. Ride with your legs. They can see what you're doing. It doesn't mean anything. There's no point in you getting dropped because you were trying to pull above your level. That doesn't help you. Because you need you need positive reinforcement. So take a 10 second pull, get off the front, so that you're there to live when the group bounces on later in the ride. I've been sitting there for a while. I start to talk to Kurt. He really didn't want to talk. What happens is when you're talking to somebody in the riding heart, uh, it takes a lot of effort. I noticed that he was doing a lot of spinning at first. Right here, is, he's probably in the low 90s. I'm about 89, thereabout. I, I look over, I'm talking to him, he doesn't want to talk. He starts to ride away from me right here. 
<laughs> he got tired of me talking. And so here yeah, the world's going up and now we're accelerating. We're going into the wind, up a climb, accelerating. And what is it, 3%, 2, 3%, now it's back to 1. But this is uphill. And then the light turns green. So those who depend on red light, they don't have a reprieve. <laughs> so right as we get through the light, I turn off my power a little bit because we're going to be going downhill. And I'm thinking about the next day. I'm like, I'm not going to kill my legs today. I got to ride tomorrow. You always got to be thinking about what's to come. Everybody in a group ride has a plan. So if somebody gets dropped, it may not be because of the group. It may be because they don't want to ride hard that day. It may be. It doesn't matter. That's not significant. Somebody getting dropped does not make you better. What makes you better is what you're able to do. So compete with yourself. You can gauge yourself against other people, but compete with how you're doing. So if the next time you come out, you're riding stronger or better, that's all that should matter to you. It shouldn't matter who got dropped. Just keep that in mind. I know it's easy to not do that, but keep that in mind. stop at the corner for the light. That's Teresa. That's Terry. So all three of these guys have the same light. So I'm definitely interested. I love the beam. I love the size of the beam. I like how it's mounted below the bar. So after that, I had pulled for so long, nobody wanted to come to the front. So, you can see me by the white line. <laughs> it had been so hard, nobody wanted to come. I'm, I had waved them through, nobody wanted to come. So I just kept moving to the right, then Teresa moved up. And that's how we ride. We, we ended on uh, Saturday with the bike bar. More to come. Next week, we're going to be riding with a bunch of crazy road racers. So that should be a lot of fun for you all to see. So I hope you got your K's in. And if not, get on the trainer. Keep moving. Fire those doctors. Get out there. <laughs>